What is the worst pain you have ever experienced in your genitals? I know that's a little bit of an odd question, but I think it could be quite the icebreaker for some future conversations. And really, there's some very cool and interesting anatomy and clinical information that we can learn from these conditions. So in order to help us with this, we're gonna talk about five major causes of male genital pain. And a few of these are a little bit more common, and many of you may have experienced some of them. But some of the others, you really don't want to experience. Like, ever. So, let's bravely get into this. The first one we will discuss is what is known as Peyronie's disease. And this is a condition characterized by the development of scar tissue on the dorsal side, or what many would think of as the top of the penis. And the scar tissue leads to bent or curved erections. This curvature can be significant and in different directions. Again, most often in the dorsal direction. And it may result in significant pain, erectile dysfunction, difficulty with sexual intercourse, and shortening of the penis. The exact cause of Peyronie's disease is not entirely understood, but in some cases it is thought to be related to trauma or injury to the penis that results in abnormal healing and the formation of the scar tissue. Peyronie's disease can vary from mild to severe and may develop slowly or appear suddenly. Now, as far as what to do or how to treat this, for some, it can improve on its own without any treatment. However, for many men, treatment may be necessary to improve the condition and alleviate the symptoms. Treatment options include medications, injections directly into the scar tissue, and traction therapy, which would be using a device to stretch or pull on the penis in order to improve the abnormal curve and restore the length. And there have been small case studies that have shown some efficacy for this treatment option. And if the other treatment options fail, surgery is also an option. Next, we have good old fashioned testicular trauma. And this is a bit of an obvious one, but it has to be addressed because almost every male has likely experienced some form of this. However, many people wonder why they feel pain in their lower abdomen. So we'll have to address this as well. And we also need to say that there's a wide spectrum of events that can cause testicular or genital trauma. And I'll actually mention a funny story about how this can occur while working out at the gym. But the most common form of genital trauma is when a vicious perpetrator engages their psoas, aliacus, and other hip flexor muscles, and then forcefully engages their quadricep muscles while simultaneously aiming these forceful muscular contractions towards the victim's genitals. This action is also known as a kick to the balls or testicles. Now this can be quite painful, and again, there are varying degrees of how severe this can be. It is possible to rupture a testicle. I don't recommend doing this, but luckily for most of us that have been kicked in the testicles, the testicles don't typically rupture. But anybody who's been kicked here before knows that you get that sharp initial pain right in the area, but then you often hear males say that it feels like it's like they have been shoved up into the abdomen, which in reality this isn't happening, but they do feel the pain in their lower abdomen. So why is this? Well, this is an example of referred pain. Preferred pain is when sensory neurons from different parts of the body converge onto the same segments of the spinal cord. So your brain almost thinks the pain is coming from the other area as opposed to the area that is actually being stimulated through pain. And in this case, it can feel like it's coming from the abdomen. Now, as I previously mentioned, I was going to give what we can think of as an honorable mention for genital trauma occurring at the gym. Earlier last year, I was with a family member at the gym and he was racking a 45 pound plate on one of those vertical weight plate stackers. And instead of slowly lowering the plate down, he just dropped it onto the stacker while his pelvis was pushed right up against the next plate down. And when he dropped the weight, this pinched his glands penis in between the two plates. And I did what any good person would do. I erupted in laughter, <laughs> but, but, then I realized I had been trained as a medical provider and I had to act my age and act like according to my profession. So I quickly switched gears and offered to examine the area. He was in enough pain that he actually considered my offer, but then he politely declined. So quick gym safety tip, pelvis clear, then drop weight. Next we have acute bacterial prostatitis, which would be inflammation of the prostate gland due to a bacterial infection. And the type of bacteria that most commonly causes this is E. coli, but it can also be caused by the same bacteria that cause chlamydia and gonorrhea. The signs and symptoms of acute bacterial prostatitis are typically not subtle, as most men that get this have noticeable pelvic and perineal pain and are acutely ill, 
with spiking fevers, chills, malaise, myalgia, painful urination, as well as increased urinary frequency and urgency. The urine can also appear cloudy, and when the prostate is examined by a digital rectal exam, it is quite firm, swollen, and we'll say exquisitely tender. The bacteria get up to the prostate by entering the urethra and moving up the urinary tract. This can occur from an untreated typical UTI, also again from chlamydia and gonorrhea, medical procedures such as the use of a catheter, or even from bladder outlet obstruction when the urine can't get out properly and flows backwards or kind of reverse in this upstream direction. And the treatment of acute bacterial prostatitis is accomplished with the use of antibiotics. Now with all this talk about genital pain and destruction, Jeffrey the skeleton was feeling a little bit left out because as you can tell, he no longer has his genital structures. So he wanted me to take a quick second to talk about something that he does have, like his teeth, mostly, and how important it is to take care of your teeth with the new Wave electric toothbrush from today's sponsor, Lifen. This toothbrush is amazing. It has some impressive new tech, while also having an elegant and high quality design for an unbeatable price. And one of the first things I thought when I was about to open this was, Apple made a toothbrush, because it looks like the exact same clean aesthetically pleasing packaging, but even more important than aesthetically pleasing packaging is the incredible performance of this toothbrush with its combined 60 degree oscillation and 66,000 vibrations per second, making it so your teeth will be around long after you're gone, kind of like Jeffrey, but even better because he didn't have a life and toothbrush. Lifen uses a new servo system with a powerful 6 watt motor, giving you consistent brushing while at the same time being very gentle on your gums because it combines this strong cleaning power of oscillation with soft bristles, unlike some of the more expensive brands that only use a 2 watt motor. It also has a very high quality IPX7 waterproof design that has a simple clean look and also literally stays clean due to having no gaps for gunk and other hygiene waste products to build up in. It also has a cool magnetic fast charging feature and can charge in just two and a half hours. And you can easily switch between fully customizable modes using its pressure sensitive button. And again, one of the best parts of this is the affordable price at $69 and only $10 for a pack of three new brush heads. So if you're interested in one of these new wave toothbrushes from Lifen, be sure to check out the link in the description below. Now the second to worst one on our list is the testicular torsion. A testicular torsion can be a serious medical condition that occurs when a testicle rotates within the scrotum, twisting the structure called the spermatic cord. And the spermatic cord brings blood to the testes. Now you could imagine that this could be quite painful. I remember vividly the first time I saw this in the emergency department. The poor guy was in so much pain. And looking at his testicle, you could see something wasn't right, as the testicle was high riding or elevated, as well as oriented more transversely rather than vertically. And one thing that this patient was missing or was absent during our physical exam is that the patient did not have what is known as the cremasteric reflex. Now the typical reflex that you've likely had tested on yourself in a doctor's office would be the patellar reflex, or what you might think of as the knee-jerk reaction, where they tap the patellar ligament and your quads reflexively contract. However, there are many other reflexes that are used in clinical settings, and the cremasteric reflex is one of those that you would use if you suspect a testicular torsion. And it is done by gently stroking the skin of the inner upper portion of the thigh and this will cause a muscle within the spermatic cord called the cremaster muscle to reflexively contract and elevate the testicle on the same side that the skin was stroked. And this reflex is most often absent in someone that has a testicular torsion because when the spermatic cord is twisted, this compresses the nerves involved in that reflex. And it was really funny when I was back in college and we first learned about this reflex from our professor. The next day you could kind of hear this buzz amongst the guys throughout the room, this whispering if you will, and you'd hear this, hey, did you try it? Did you try it? So if you have access to a scrotum, you can try this reflex at home because it definitely works. But back to the testicular torsion. The twisting of the spermatic cord is such a big problem because it reduces the blood flow to the testicle. And if this is not treated quickly, could lead to necrosis and a need to remove the testicle. Treatment is almost always surgical, where they would detorse or untwist the testis and perform an orchiopexy, which is a fancy pants way of saying fixating or attaching the testis to the inside of the scrotum. And this is important because most people that experience a testicular torsion have a defect in the developmental process where the testis doesn't properly fixate or attach to the scrotum. 
Testicular torsions are often triggered in susceptible individuals from trauma, strenuous activity, and can even occur spontaneously, which is also just known as bad luck. Now you might have caught it when I said that testicular torsions are the second worst thing on our list. But what could possibly be worse than a testicular torsion? Well, let's talk about Fournier's gangrene. Fournier's gangrene is a rare but serious bacterial infection that affects the deep soft tissues of the genital structures and the perineum, which is the area between the anus and the genitals. And it causes those tissues to die. This type of gangrene is a form of necrotizing fasciitis. You may have heard of this as flesh-eating disease, and it can spread rapidly and is considered a medical emergency. Again, this is caused by bacteria, often a combination of aerobic and anaerobic bacteria like E. coli, Staph aureus, and Strep, to name a few. These bacteria can enter the body through a wound or injury in the genital area or through other areas of the body. But it is typically seen in patients who are diabetic that have had a long-standing indwelling urethral catheter, have had urethral trauma in the presence of urinary tract infection, and are immunocompromised. And when someone gets this, they often experience sudden severe pain in the genital or perineal areas, swelling and redness, fever, chills, foul-smelling discharge, and even crepitus, or in other words, a crackling sensation under the skin due to the gas that is being produced by the bacteria. Now, treatment of this involves immediate administration of broad-spectrum antibiotics to fight the infection, plus surgical debridement, which is the removal of dead and infected tissue to stop the spread of the infection, as well as supportive care such as IV fluids and nutrition. Now, again, this can be life-threatening. But in general, the sooner the intervention takes place, the better, as the prognosis improves significantly with early diagnosis and treatment. So hopefully that gave you some new insight on some of the worst genital conditions a man can experience. So guys, protect yourselves, wear a cup when necessary, and women, don't worry, we haven't forgotten about you. We will be doing a very similar video for the worst genital pain that females can experience very soon. In the meantime, if you wanna learn more about some crazy things that can happen to the human body, you can check out our video on the craziest things I've found in dead bodies. Thanks for supporting the channel. Let us know what you thought of the video in the comments. And of course, I'll see you soon.